down the team, he goes, takes it away. The full bang bang, very number nine, Lawrence Brady. Good afternoon and welcome to Hugh O'Reilly Memorial Park in Cotill for the Cavan Senior Football Championship final sponsored by Medivue Bar and Restaurant, proprietors Declan and Claire Sher Sheridan. The, both participants out on the field, gone or, on the right in their traditional green with red hoop and Mullahorn down on the left with the blue with a yellow hoop. Referee for today's match is Martin Brady. He's out there in the centre of the park with the two captains, Joe Brady and Gerard Brady from Mullahorn. The Gauna team line out as selected. In goal, Declan O'Reilly wearing number two. Right cornerback, Kevin Madden. Fullback and captain of the side, Joe Brady. And left cornerback, Gavin Harton. At right halfback, Christy Madden. Centre halfback, Kieran Brady. And left halfback, Gary Donahue. Centre field, wearing number eight, Paddy Brady, and number nine, Lawrence Brady. At right half forward, Virgil Harton. Centre half forward, Bernard Morris. And left half forward, Ronald Simpson. At right corner forward, Declan McCabe. Full forward, Dermot McCabe. And left corner forward is Damien Dignan. Dermot McCabe made the trip to Belfast this week, where he picked up the Ulster GA Writers Award for the month of August for his... Star performance with Cavan in the Under-21 Championship semi-final against Mead. The Mullahorn team have one change from the programme. Uh, Damien Riley wearing number 16, lines out at centre-half forward with Sean Lee Brady reverting to the left-half forward position. The Mullahorn team in goal, Eamon Brady. Right corner forward, right corner back, Michael G. Brady. Full back, Porrick Brady. And left corner back, Kieran O'Reilly. At full back or left, right half back, Gerald Brady, who captains the Mullahorn side. Centre half back, Kieran Brady, and left half back, Paul Lynch. At wearing number eight at midfield is Christy Shields, and number nine, Michael Fagan. A right corner, right half forward, Michael Fitzsimon. Centre half forward, wearing number 16, Damien Riley, and left half forward, Sean Brady, wearing number 11. At top of the right, Danny Brady. Full forward, Seamus Gannon, and left half. Left corner forward is David Fagan. So both sides are lining out behind the Kingscourt Brasserie band for its traditional ma march. Joe Brady down there with a little mascot toddling alongside him here in front of the hill. Kingscourt Brasserie band lead them off. Gana on the near side. Big, tall, strong team. Defeated Kingscourt in the semi final here last Saturday. Mullahorn ac accounting for Koshala at the same venue. So, the duels of today, well, the big one we'll be looking at will be between Damien Riley of Mullahorn and the Ghana centre half back, Kieran Brady. be interesting to see if Damien will play deep into the centre of the field looking for breaking ball. Damien just recovered from a shoulder injury which he sustained in the playoff stages of the match of the championship against Killing Care at the Cross Keys venue. So the sides, sides marching behind the band down in, under, in front of the goal on our left hand side. The sun beaming down here in Hugh O'Reilly Memorial Park. Large attendances are already gather, gathered in. The curtain raiser to this match was between Beltorbet and Drung in the Intermediate Championship semi-final. Beltorbet were winners of that match. They meet then in the final on the 6th of October. So, referee for today's match is Martin Brady from the Ballinat Club. Martin, very experienced official. He referee in his second championship final has already done one between Kingscourt and Gauna back in 1993. Lines on for today are Brian Crow from the Cabin Gales Club and Michael Lyons from Drummalee. Oh, two sides. Making their way down along the far side of the field behind the Kingsford 
Press and rebound underneath the stand. Most people preferring to stay out on the hill, the open sunshine here in O'Reilly Park at Hill. Both teams have broke from behind the band. Ghana will defend the town end, the church end goals in the first half. Declan O'Reilly making his way down there. They'll play from right to left. Ghana, this is their fourth county final in a row. Winners in 1994 at the same venue here in Cotill Centenary year when they defeated Mullahorn. So this is a replay of the 1994 match as now we have our on the beam. Formalities have been finished with around the being played. The Kings for Press and Reed Band making their way off the pitch. So referee Martin Brady with the ball in his hands. Ready to get the proceedings on the way. I see Bernard Morris has already switched to midfield where he partners Lawrence Brady with Paddy Brady going to a corner forward position. Oh, referee Martin Brady setting to stopwatch. The first couple of minutes could be very interesting. The ball broken down into the hands of Bernard Morris. Gets it to Kieran Brady. Kieran Brady coming out of the fence, plays it in, looking for Dermot McCabe. The ball hops away from him. And it's picked up in there by Kieran O'Reilly for Mullahorn. Kieran solos the ball, comes out across his own line, kicks it right footed out this side of the field, finds Christy Shields. High tackle on Christy Shields. Referee waves all play. Shields with the ball, kicks it right footed way down the far side of the field. Looking for Seamus Gannon a pull forward. Gannon wins the ball, but breaks away from him to the corner back. Kevin Madden. Madden getting the Kieran Brady. Kieran Brady playing it out to Lawrence. Lawrence with the ball in the centre of the park, kicking it down the swing, looking for Bernard Morris. It goes to Paddy Brady. The midfielder come corner forward, gets it to Bernard Morris. Two tack men tackle on Bernard Morris. On the 45 metre line, it's going to be a free to the Ghana man. The centre half forward gets up and hobbles away. Declan McCabe has picked up the ball. He plays the ball short, looks for Dermot. Dermot finds it 20 metres from goal, turns onto the left boot. It's left footed from Dermot McCabe. It's high from Dermot McCabe, and that's a magnificent score from the Ghana full forward. A work of art from Dermot McCabe. It was high, it was lofted, it drifted in with the breeze on all the way over the bar. The opening score after one minute of play goes to the Ghana man. Eamon Brady to take the kick out from the 20 metre line. The goalkeeper in yellow. Kicks right footed, it goes long, it reaches the halfway line. Michael Fagan goes up, that's superb fielding by Fagan. Gets it to Shawnee Brady. Shawnee Brady goes round his marker as a judge to have taken too many steps by referee Martin Brady. It's going to be a free to the ground man. De Declan McCabe drifting away out the field. He takes it, kicks it in high. The full back going up for it. It breaks down to Dermot McCabe. It goes to the corner forward. It's back out to Bernard Morris. Bernard Morris in space, turns onto his left boot, kicks it left foot, it kicks it high. That's that second score of the game and that's that second score for Ghana. Ronald Simpson was the man feeding it out to Bernard Morris. He kicked it right-footed and high over the bar. 
not to Fagana. No score from Lahore in early stages yet in the Cabin Senior Football Championship final, sponsored by the Medivue Bar and Restaurant. The kick out from Eamon Brady, a second from the 20 metre line. It's high, drifts across the halfway line. Two Ghana men go up, but breaks down to Damien Riley. Damien had it, he lost it, he's on the ground. The referee judges that it's going to be a throw up. Two Ghana players are crowding him out. Referee calls for the ball has it in his hands, will be throw up between Christie and Lawrence. Broken down by Christie Shields, it breaks to was it Kevin Madden, it is Kevin Madden, he's fouled, it's going to be a free to the gun man, the cornerback, plays it long up the field, finds Paddy Brady, Paddy Brady lets the ball go, drift away from him, it goes to the gun man, it's now with Kieran Brady, Kieran Brady plays it out this side of the field, Gerard, the captain, kicks it long down the field, it's drifting, Gavin Harton coming out underneath it, Gavin collects it, plays it to Christy Madden, the speedy wing halfback, Christy comes out round the marker, gets it on the 45 metre line, Gavin Harton plays it up the field, that's straight to a gun man, that's uh, our, our Kieran Riley from Mullahorn, he's fouled and it's going to be a free to the Mullahorn man. Taken short, looks for Damien, Damien collects it in front of his marker. The cap and box rep comes out around his marker, going soloing forward, plays it in, looking for Christy Shields. The ball was a little bit long, Christy Shields go down, it's with Joe Brady. Joe Brady plays it out, late tackle of Joe Brady by Christy Shields, the referee has blown up play, it's going to be a free to the Gowna man. The referee is calling aside Christy Shields, he has the notebook out, the tackle was late, it was high. And Christy Shields is going to be the first player entered into the notebook of referee Martin Brady. <laughs> Gary Donoghue is down injured with the man with the left knee strapped. Will leave the free instead on the 45 metre line to Gavin Harton. Harton comes, collects the ball. Kicks it right footed, very long. It's going to land on the other 45 metre line. The ball breaking down into Kieran Riley, the cornerback. He's saying plenty of play already. Plays it out, signs Shawnee Brady, the wing half forward. Shawnee wearing number 11. Plays it up into the corner, looking at Danny. Danny on the halfway line. Lays it back to Kieran Riley, coming forward from the cornerback position. He's pulled down. And it's going to be a free to the young Ghana man. Kieran Riley, full back on the cabin under 21 team all season. He was fouled, so it's going to be a free to Mullahorn, taken by Michael Fagan. Plays it long into the corner. Finds Damien. Damien bursting inside. He's pulled down. It's just inside the large parallelogram, I think. Referee is looking again. He's not giving it. He's giving a 13 metre free to the Mullahorn man. And Michael Fagan is the man to take it. From where I was sitting, it looks as if Damien fielded the ball inside the large parallelogram. The referee didn't award the penalty. He's given a 13 metre free to the Mullahorn men. And this will be taken by Michael Fagan. Michael Fagan's kick is low, it drops in the goal mat. It comes out to Kieran Brady. Kieran Brady with the ball. An easy chance there for Mullahorn. It was missed. And Kieran Brady clears it long out the field. Jared in front of his man. Jared Brady for Mullahorn. He's fouled from behind. It's going to be a free in to the Mullahorn men. Dead straight in front of goal, about 40 metres from the Ghana goal. That last Michael Fagan free. A real talking point among the people here. He seemed to stab his toe into the ground. He'd be hoping to make amends with this one. He hits this one perfectly. He hits this one high. He hits this one all the way over the bar. And there's just one point between the sides. Six minutes of play having elapsed here in the first half of the Cavan Senior Football Championship final. Mullerhorn the lead by two points to one. Declan O'Reilly, his first kick out from the 20 metre line. The kick out lands in the centre of the park. A little push in the back. Kieran O'Reilly feels it from Mullahorn. Goes soloing forward, gets it out to Kieran Brady. It's now with Seamus Gannon, the full forward operating way out the field. He turns, kicks it right foot, it comes right across on the 45 metre line. The ball breaking into Christy Shields. Christy Shields in space, solos, loses control of it, gets it back again. Fist passes into Gerard Brady. Gerard Brady turns, kicks it right foot, it goes very high, it goes out to the right and it goes wide. Mullahorn's first wide of the afternoon here in O'Reilly Park. They trail by one pint. Mullahorn, not one, Ghana, two pints. Oh, Declan O'Reilly. Placing the ball on the edge of the small parallelogram. His first kick out from that position here today. It's right footed. I mean, out across the 45 metre line. Michael Fagan lets the ball go, drift away from it, goes to Damien. Damien is fouled, it's going to be a free to the Mullahorn man. The referee call him playback. And it's Michael Fagan is the man who's going to take it. It's about 46 metres from the 
from the Ghana goal. And well within the range of the Mullahorn midfielder. Michael Fagan strikes the ball right footed. This one's drifting off out to the left. It's going to drop short, breaking down. Pulled on by Joe Brady. He clears his lines only as far as Christy Shields. Christy Shields pretends to go one way, goes the other. He's fouled. It's going to be a free in to the Mullahorn man. And Michael Fagan gets another bite at the cherry, this time from a more favourable angle. Out to the left of goal will suit the right footed kicker. Some 35, 36 metres from the Ghana goal. Fagan approaches the ball, strikes it. It's looking good, it's right footed, it's high. It's drifted off out to the right and it's drifted wide. Mullahorn second wide. Did trail by one point, Ghana not two, Mullahorn not one. Declan O'Reilly to take the kick out. Crosses the 45 meter line, breaks down to Lawrence Brady. Lawrence Brady with the ball, he feeds it out, finds Kevin Madden. Kevin Madden, the cornerback, way up the field. He lays it off to Bernard Morris, crossing the 45 meter line. Bernard Morris is the judge, they've taken too many steps, and it's going to be a free to the Mullahorn man. Good defending by the Mullahorn halfbacks. It's played out this side of the field. He's looking for the number 10. That's Michael Fitzsimons. Fitzsimons with the ball on the halfway line, goes up along the line, kicks it left footed into the open space. Joe Brady is out in front of his marker. Joe Brady in front of Danny. Joe, the Ghana captain, comes out with the ball, plays it to Bernard Morris. Bernard Morris coming way off the 40, plays it right footed into the corner. Looks for Ronald Simpson, Kieran Riley going for it. He's fouled from behind by Ronald Simpson. It's going to be a free to the Ghana men, or Mullahorn men rather. And I'm sure that free will be taken by Eamon Brady, coming way out, out of goal, um, 30 metres from his own goal, head straight in front of the goals. Him and Brady strikes a right foot way down the far side of the field, broken down by a Ghanaman. Going out after it is Michael Fagan. Fagan pulled on by Lawrence Brady. A kick on Michael Fagan by Lawrence Brady. Referee reaches for the notebook. He's going to speak to Lawrence, the number nine for Ghana. Oh, Lawrence Brady, booked by referee, Martin Brady from Balagna. Michael Fagan takes the result and free, kicks it from his hands, right foot, it's in, drifting towards goal. Declan O'Reilly comes off his line, collects it for the Gownerman, plays it out looking for Kevin Madden. Madden fields it, hops the ball, comes out round his marker, uses all his strength, gets it to Christie. Christie, the speedy wing halfback, coming away with the ball, crosses the halfway line, miss solos, the ball going to Declan McCabe. Declan McCabe comes out round his marker, plays it back to Bernard Morris. Bernard Morris with the ball, playing it into the corner, looks for Dermot. Dermot McCabe out in front of his marker, the full forward. The ginger hair full forward turns, kicks it left footed in towards goal. Held on there by Eamon Brady. Eamon Brady solos and kicks it right out this side of the field. Finds Fergal Harton and not Mark Ganneman. Straight into the hands of Harton. Harton turns, kicks it right footed, kicks it high. It goes off out to the left and a right and it goes wide. A poor clearance there from Eamon Brady. The Mullahorn keeper did straight to a Ghana forward who was unmarked. That was Fergal Harton. He shot and went left out to the right and wide. Eamon Brady's kick out. Center of the park, broken down by Lawrence Brady. It's bobbing around on the ground. The referee has awarded a free to the Gownerman, and that will be taken by Lawrence Brady. Declan McCabe going to take it. Kicks it high in the direction of goal. Dermot McCabe going for the ball has gone out to the left and gone wide. So the tempo of the match having dropped somewhat from the opening moments. The score remains Ghana not two, Ullahorn not one. <coughs> Eamon Brady's kick out. Broken down the centre of the park, goes to Mullahorn, and that's Kieran Riley. Kieran Riley 
playing it up the field, broken by Damien, goes to Kieran Brady, Kieran Brady gets it to Lawrence, Lawrence with the ball out this side of the field, turns, kicks it right footed, long and high underneath to his Kieran Brady, breaks it down and only goes as far as uh, Paddy Brady, Paddy Brady bursting in towards goal, he kicks it left footed high into the top of the net, a good goal by the corner forward, Paddy Brady, kicked it with the left foot right across, in front of him and Brady, it went high into the corner, and Muller got a lead, one goal and two to Mullerhorn's one point. The ball breaking off the Mullerhorn centre centre half back. Kieran Brady straight into the path of Paddy Brady for Ghana, and he made no mistake putting it to the roof of him and Brady's net. The kick out held superbly in the centre of the park by Fi Michael Fagan. Gets it to Kieran Riley. Gets it to Christy Shields. Christy Shields with the ball. Loads of space, kicks a right footed high in, in the direction of goal. The ball breaking down goes to Michael Fitzsimons. Fitzsimons going through, his path is blocked, turns, kicks a right footed, kicks it high, and that's Mullerhorn's second point of the game. One goal and two for Gauna, two points for Mullerhorn, just three points between the sides here in Hugh O'Reilly Memorial Park and the Cavan Senior Football Championship final. Mullerhorn under the manage managership of Kieran O'Reilly, a native of Arba. Ghana being trained by Eamon Coleman from Derry, now working down in Longford. Captain Madden holding the ball in the centre of the park, coming away with it, gets it to Lawrence Brady. Lawrence Brady gets it to Declan McCabe. Declan McCabe fist passing it, looking for Fergal Harton. Fergal Harton coming, bursting through the middle, he's on the 20 metre line, loses control of it, gets it up again. Still Fergal Harton with the ball. Turns, kicks it to cross goal. Porrick Brady coming away with it for Gauna or for Mullerhorn, plays it out the field, chasing after his Damien O'Reilly. He collects it. It's to Damien O'Reilly, comes solo in away, crosses the halfway line. O'Reilly cuts back inside of Kevin Madden. Still Damien O'Reilly with the ball. Goes round Kevin Madden. The burst of pace, playing it back out the field. It goes as far as Michael Fitzsimons. Michael Fitzsimons is. In fact, it's Seamus Gannon. He's fouled. It's going to be a free to the Mullerhorn men. Take it quickly. Goes to Sean Brady, but Declan O'Reilly advances quickly off his line, plays it out the far side of the field. It's with Christy Madden, gets it to Kieran. Kieran Brady is now with Christy Madden. He kicks a right footed way long down the field, far side. Dermot McCabe underneath it, as indeed is Park Brady. Dermot McCabe wins it. He's fouled, it's going to be a free to the gown, a full forward haul to the ground there. Dermot McCabe, the man with the very unorthodox style of kicking freeze, standing more or less with his back to goal. Steps out the field, kicks it left footed, kicks it high, it goes out to the right and it goes wide. Gauna second wide at the match, Mullerhorn with two wides. Mullerhorn did trail by three pints, Gauna one goal and two, Mullerhorn two pints, the goal coming from Paddy Brady, the corner forward who lined out at midfield, moved into the corner. He has put Ghana into a three-point lead. Eamon Brady to take the kick out from the edge of the small parallelogram. The wind holding the kick out back. It's breaking to Bernard Morris. Bernard Morris lays it off to Fergal Harton. And Fergal Harton in space kicks a right footer, kicks it high. He makes no mistake. And that's Ghana's fourth score of the match. Ghana playing with great purpose, coming at speed onto the ball. Able to take it off Bernard Morris a lot of the time, Fergal Harton, De Declan McCabe, and others coming at speed on the burst and tapping over pints. One goal and three for Ghana, two pints for Mullerhorn. Eamon Brady's kick out high to the centre of the park. The ball held there by Michael Fagan. He's sur fielding superbly for Mullerhorn. He plays it to Christy Shields. Christy wasn't expecting it, it goes away from Christy Shields. It was it's with Fergal Harton. He was fouled, it's free taken quickly. Broken away from Dermot McCabe, goes to Kieran Riley. Kieran Riley with the ball, hops it, plays it to Michael Jarrod. Michael Jarrod plays it out the field. It's with uh, Christy Madden for Ghana, gets it to Declan McCabe. Declan McCabe plays it inside, looking for Dermot McCabe, but Porrick Brady is there. Porrick Brady kicks it right footed out the field, looking for Damien. Damien collects a Honda 40, kicks it right footed, long and high, looking for Seamus Gannon, doesn't reach him. Joe Brady is there for Ghana, turns round his marker. Fist passes it out the far side of the field. Finds the on mark, Christy Madden. Christy Madden with the ball. He kicks it right footed. It's long, it's very high. Dermot McCabe underneath it. He gets a touch on it. The ball breaks down though to Kieran Brady, or Kieran Riley rather. Riley from Mullerhorn plays it back to Michael Jarrett Brady. Michael Jarrett plays it out this side of the field. He finds Christy Shields. Christy Shields, the number eight. 
for Mullerhorn kicking it right footed up the far side of the field looking for Sean Brady that won't reach Sean Brady Christy Madden is chasing after it for Ghana he gets the ball up into his hands been shadowed by Sean Brady, kicks it long down the, along the far wing, looking for Ronald Simpson. Simpson gets it in front of his marker, plays it back into Kevin Madden. Kevin Madden, the number two, playing way, way out the field. He missed solos, uh, the ball knocked away from him, only goes as far as Declan McKay, but it's with Bernard Morris, it's back with Kevin Madden. Kevin Madden kicks it right-footed, he kicks it high. This one is gone all the way over the bar from the gown of number two, Kevin Madden. Good constructive play from Ghana, interchanging up the passes, finding a man all the time. And Kevin Madden was the one, the cornerback, who converted the score as Eamon Brady prepares to take the kick out from the 20 metre line. One goal and four for Ghana, two points for Mullahorn. Ghana playing with the breeze. Christy Shields with the ball. This pass it back to Kieran O'Reilly. Kieran O'Reilly hops it, the cornerback playing quite well out the field. The ball, a little nudge there from Michael for Simon, so it's going to be a free to the Gaunerman, and that will be taken by Fergal Harton. Fergal Harton playing it up along this wing, looking for Paddy Brady. The ball has gone out over the sideline, will be a line ball to the Mullahorn men. That's Michael Jerry Brady to take it. Long down the field, broken down by Kevin Madden, goes to Bernard Morris. Bernard Morris fist passes out the far side of the field into the space. Christy Madden is there, the man with the pace. Christy Madden goes round his marker. He's on the ground, plays it back to Kieran Brady. The support play is very good from Ghana. Gets it to Lawrence. Lawrence kicks it right footed. He kicks it high. It's gone all the way over the bar from Lawrence Brady. Uh, he extends Mullerhorn's lead. It's now one goal and five. That's a total of eight points to Muller. To Ga one goal and five for Ghana. That's a total of eight points to Mullerhorn's two points. So Emma Brady to take the resulting kick out is six from the 20 meter line. The Mullerhorn keeper kicks it way out the far side of the field. Gary Donahue trying to get it for Ghana. It breaks to Kieran O'Reilly. He's seen a lot of possession in the corner back position. He plays it long up the field looking for Damien. Damien collects it in front of Kieran Brady. Damien Riley with the ball. He's going soloing up along the line. Cutting back inside. Hops it. Been shadowed all the way by Kieran Brady. The ball missed solo by Damien. He wins it back again. This time he kicks it right footed. He kicks it long. It's right footed. It goes out to the right and it goes wide. Mullahorn with three wides. Ghana with two wides. Ghana the lead. One goal and five to Mullahorn's two points. Declan O'Reilly's kick out coming way out this side of the field. Christy Shields is there to collect it for Mullahorn. Christy Shields fist passes it in looking for Danny Brady. Danny Brady wins it in front of his marker. Hops the ball. Still Danny with the ball going in on the 13 metre line. Goes around his marker. Still Danny Brady going, bursting through. He's on the ground. Gets the ball back up into his hands. Is a judge to have been fouled and it's going to be a free to the Mullahorn man on the 13 metre line just outside the large parallelogram. And I'm sure it will be Danny Brady to take this one himself from the ground. Danny placing the ball, the number 13. Danny stepping back, taking the two steps out to the left. Will be coming in at the angle, the left footed player. Kicks it left footed, kicks it high, kicks it over the bar. <laughs> Mullahorn's third point of the match to reduce the deficit to just five points. Gauna one goal and five, Mullerhorn three points. After 21 minutes of play in the first half of the Cavan Senior Football Championship final at your Riley Memorial Park, Goodhill. Declan O'Reilly's kick out. High to the centre of the park, Lawrence Brady goes up, the ball breaks down to Damien Riley. Damien Riley bursts out, he's fouled and it's going to be a free to the Mullahorn men. Michael Fagan kicking it right footed, high, the ball flicked back across goal, does a break for the Mullahorn men. 
It's on the ground, bobbing around. Declan O'Reilly is out there, the ground of goalkeeper. Way out off his line, plays it out the field, finds Kevin Madden. That's a great clearance from the ground of goalkeeper. It's back with Kevin Madden, gets it up to Declan McCabe. Declan McCabe going forward, finds uh, Dermot McCabe in space. Dermot McCabe hops the ball, holds it up, waits for the support. That support comes from Declan McCabe. It's back with Dermot McCabe. Dermot with the ball, playing, kicks it left-footed, kicks it high. It's all the way over the bar, and that's another magnificent score from Dermot McCabe. Dermot McCabe's second score from an acute angle, the left footed shot. Kick out taken quickly, it's with Jared Brady. He plays it long down the field looking for Damien. Damien collects the ball in front of his marker. He crosses the halfway line. Sid Damien Riley with the ball. Plays it to Seamus Gannon. Seamus Gannon gets up, gets around his marker. Still Gannon going solo in forward, going in into the corner. Plays it back across the field to Michael Fagan. Fagan in space. Chance to shoot. He kicks it right footed. He kicks it high. It's drifting with the breeze out to the left and it's out wide. Mullerhorn four wides. Gano a two. Gano playing the much more constructive football, interchanging of passes to support play at all times. They lead one goal and six to Mullerhorn's three points. The short kick out to Kevin Madden, well worked by Declan O'Reilly. Madden coming away with the ball, kicks it right footed way out this side of the field, finds Fergal Harton, Harton collects it, gets it back to Kevin Madden. Madden's playing extremely well for Ghana today. He gets it out this side of the field, it's with Christie. Christie on the halfway line, he's hauled to the ground, the referee allows play go on, it's now with Bernard Morris. Bernard Morris hops the ball, is out round his marker, solos again, waiting for the opportunity to delay it off. Turns in loads of space, Miss solos this one. It goes to Christy Shields, the ball played away from Christy Shields on the ground, the referee says it was illegally done so, and he is awarded a free to the Mullahorn man, and that would be taken by Kieran Brady, the Mullahorn centre half back. The kick out, the free kick taken out this side of the field, brought out over the sideline by Danny Brady and will be a line ball to the gunman, taken short by Gavin Harton as far as uh, Fergal. The ball breaks away from us with Jared Brady. Jared Brady is uh, fouled and it's going to be a free to the Mullahorn man. Fergal Harton being called over by referee Martin Brady. He's been spoken to. Jared Brady is back up on his feet. It's not quite as bad as it first looked. Referee taking the name of... Fergal Harton. So Kieran Brady to take the resultant free. Kieran Brady kicks it right footed, he kicks it way off out to the right. Gavin Harton. Touches the ball out over the sideline will be a line ball to the Mullerhorn men. Taken short out the field as far as Christy Shields on the 20 metre line. Christy Shields turns inside his marker. He's fouled. It's going to be a free to the Mullerhorn men. And I'm sure it will be Denny Brady who's going to take it. Linesman Michael Lyons indicating the point from where the free should be taken. It's on the 13 metre line. Danny Brady hops the ball, kicks it now, left footed, it's curling, it's curling all the way, high and over the bar, that's a good score from Danny Brady. He reduces the deficit to just five points. Oh, and Declan O'Reilly takes his four kick out from the 20 metre line. His side, the lead by five points. As Kieran O'Reilly collects the breaking ball in the centre of the park, kicks it left footed up along the wing. He finds the number 15, that's David Fagan. David Fagan goes round his marker, he's still on the 13 metre line. David Fagan kicks left footed, ball breaks back across goals, pulled down by the number 11, Sean Brady, and the ball is in the back of the net. And there's just two points between the sides. The shot was ferocious from David Fagan from the 13 metre line. Declan O'Reilly parried it, it came right back across into the face of the goal and Sean Brady was on hand to kick it right footed into the corner of the net. The ball held in the centre of the park by Michael Fagan. Michael Fagan is fouled and it's going to be a free to the Mullerhorn man. 
He kicks it right footed, looks for Danny. Danny collects it in the corner. He hops the ball. Goes round his marker, turns onto the left boot, kicks it left footed across goal. Declan O'Reilly advances and clears it long down the field. Two Mullahorn players underneath it. The ball breaks down to Michael Fagan. Michael Fagan has it in the centre of the park. He's on his knees. Still Fagan with the ball. He's been overcrowded as the referee and it's going to be a free to the Mullahorn midfielder. So the game coming back to life, it looked as if Ghana were coasting and that goal has really put a bit of life into this Cavan Senior Football Championship final. Mullerhorn, the trail by two pints. Mullerhorn, one goal and four. Ghana, one goal and six. Michael Fagan with the ball about 55 metres from the Ghana goal in his hands. He's going to have a shot at goal. He kicks it right footed. It's going to drop a little bit short. The ball broken down. It's held on the line there by Declan O'Reilly. Comes out around his marker. Kicks it right footed way out the far side of the field. Kieran Brady underneath it from Mullerhorn. The ball breaks down. It goes to Kieran Riley. Knows the number seven. That's Paul Lynch. Paul Lynch is a judge to have stepped out over the sideline. It will be a line ball to the Ghana man, which will be taken by Gary Donahue. Gary Donahue playing it long down the field. He finds Declan McCabe. Declan McCabe was fouled as the free taken quickly. Finds Dermot McCabe. He's pushed in the back from behind, just outside the 20 metre line. And it will be a free to the Ghana man. Dermot McCabe, the ball played in his direction. If he comes. Anyway reasonable, he always wins it. A vital target man up front for the Ghana man. McCabe kicks it left footed, he kicks it high, he kicks it out to the right and he kicks it wide. A bad miss for the Ghana man. It's one that should have been converted. Three wides now for Ghana, four for Mullahorn, two points between the sides, one goal and six for Ghana, one goal and four for Mullahorn. With just 50 seconds of normal time remaining in the first half of the Cavan Senior Football Championship final, sponsored by the Made of You Bar and Restaurant in Cavan. The kick out, broken down by Bernard Morris, goes straight to Jared Brady. Jared Brady is robbed. Bernard Morris is there to collect the ball. He plays it to Kevin Madden. Kevin Madden with the ball, goes towards goal, crosses the 45 metre line, still Kevin Madden. He's on the ground, releases it out, touched on the ground by a Ghana man. That was Declan McCabe, and it's going to be a free to Mullerhorn, taken by Kieran Brady. Kieran kicks it out this side of the field, out over the sideline, and it will be a line ball for the Ghana man, and that's a waste of possession by the Mullerhorn man. Christy Madden is the man who's going to take the line ball. He kicks it right footed up along the wing. It goes out over the sideline. And it will be a line ball to the Mullerhorn men now down just outside the 20 metre line. In fact, it's further, it's just outside inside the 45 metre line and Michael Gerard Brady is the man to take it he kicks it right footed Damien O'Reilly going up for it the ball breaks down it goes to Christy Madden Christy Madden is fouled so it's the referee Martin Brady and it's going to be a free to the Muller, or, or the, to the Ghana man and Lawrence is the man who's going to take it takes a chart across to Fergal Harton Fergal Harton going solo in forward still Harton he kicks it right footed he kicks it high it's gone way off out to the right and it's gone wide Linesman down here and underneath us with his flag raised. Referee has blown the half time whistle. Not quite sure what happened there. Referee Martin Brady now speaking to both Fergal Harton and Michael Fagan out there. Not quite sure what is happening. Referee is speaking to his linesman, trying to find out what happened. A very exciting first half. It started at a great tempo. Ghana uh, went into an early lead. Two very good points. The first one, an excellent score from Dermot McCabe. That was followed by a Bernard Morris point. Then Ghana came back into the match. Loads of possession, but failed to convert it. Then Ghana went further ahead. That goal coming from Paddy Brady, a delightful shot, blistering shot into the top corner of the net. Ghana seemed to be coasting, but then a blistering shot from David Fagan was parried by Declan O'Reilly in the Ghana goal. And on hand to convert it was Sean Brady. That brought the game back to life. Half-time score, Mullerhorn one goal and four. Ghana one goal and six. We look forward to an entertaining second half in your O'Reilly Memorial Park. So, 
field. Lawrence Brady has the ball in his hands. The second half has commenced. Lawrence was fouled and it's going to be a free to the Gunnerman. Taken long in the field. Breaks down to Paddy Brady. Paddy Brady turns onto the left boot. It's left footed from Paddy Brady. It's high from Paddy Brady. It's gone over the bar. And Gunner go further in head. One goal and seven for the men from Lockdown. One goal and four for Mullerhorn. Three points between the sides here in Hugh O'Reilly Memorial Park. Mullerhorn, the side unbeaten in the league. Him and Brady kicks out for them down the field. Lawrence Brady holds it in the middle of the field. He's on the ground. He's back up on his knees. Feeds it out to Bernard Morris. Bernard Morris is fouled. It's going to be a free to the Gowneman. And Declan McCabe takes the free, finds Dermot. Dermot on the 13 metre, turns onto the left foot. It's tipped over the bar by Emma Brady. A great score by Dermot McCabe. Dermot McCabe's left footed shot was tapped over the bar by Eamon Brady. Gauna going to a four point lead, one goal and eight for Gauna, one goal and four for Mullerhorn. Right foot by Brady, high to the centre of the park, broken down by Lawrence Brady, goes to Fergal Harton, Fergal Harton bursts through, Harton with the ball, kicks it right footed in the direction of Dermot McCabe, McCabe chasing after it, it had hopped over his head, he collects it on the 13 metre line, Solos goes inside his marker, hops the ball again and fist passes it high and over the bar and that's an excellent score by the full forward. One goal and nine for Gauna, one goal and four for Mullerhorn. And Mullerhorn, within three minutes of the start of the second half, have increased their lead to five points. The kick out held in the centre of the park by De Declan McCabe. He plays it up the field, looking for Kevin Madden. The ball breaks away from it, goes to Jared Brady. Jared Brady has it, he's fouled, it's going to be a free out to the Mullerhorn men, and that would be taken, I think, by goalkeeper Eamon Brady. Eamon Brady kicks it right footed out of his hands, long down the field. The ball broken down by Lawrence Brady, it goes to Gary Donahue. Gary Donahue with the ball kicks it left footed up the far side of the field, goes out over the sideline, will be a line ball over there on the stand side for Mullerhorn, which will be taken by Michael Gerard Brady. So Gerard Brady, the Mullerhorn captain, now electing to take the line ball. Kicks it right footed across the field, coming way over this side of the field, chasing after his Michael Fitzsimons. Fitzsimons collects it, lays it off to Paul Lynch. Paul Lynch going so way far across the 45 metre line. The wing half back kicks it right footed. He kicks it high, it goes way off out to the right and out wide. Mullerhorn, first wide of the second half. They trail by five pints, one goal and four for Mullerhorn, one goal and nine for Ghana. And Declan O'Reilly to take the kick out from the edge of the small parallelogram. O'Reilly's kick out, high out the far side of the field. Mullerhorn man gone up for it was Michael Fagan and gone away from it. Now with Fergal Harton. Fergal Harton began to lays it back to Lawrence Brady. Lawrence Brady kicks it long, looking for the full forward, Dermot McCabe. McCabe collects it. No, in fact, he doesn't. It breaks away from him. Paddy Brady chasing after it. Paddy Brady going down to collect it, gets it up into his hands. He's close to the sideline, hasn't gone out over it. Lays it back to Dermot McCabe. He plays it back to Paddy Brady. Paddy Brady with the ball, loses control of it. And the referee has awarded a free in. To Paddy Brady. Gowneman has lost his boot. That's Dermot McCabe. And the free will be on the 13 metre line. Ball kicked away by a Mullerhorn man. And I'm sure referee Martin Brady would bring it into a more favourable angle for the Gowneman. And that indeed he does. And it will be Dermot McCabe to take the free, I'm sure. In fact, he's leaving it instead to Declan. Declan McCabe, the corner forward, kicks a right footed high out of his hands and over the bar, and he extends Gunner's lead. One goal and ten for Gunner, one goal and four for Mullerhorn. Gunner, the lead by two points at half time, they now lead by six. 
is going to introduce the substitute. That's Jerry Sheridan. He's coming in at centre half forward. Damien Riley looks to be going to the full back position. Oh, Jerry Sheridan coming on from Mullahorn at centre half forward. Damien Riley going to full back. Declan McCabe kicking it long for Gauna. The ball breaking down. It's with Paul Lynch played out this side of the field. Looking for Jerry Sheridan. Kieran Brady breaks it down. It goes to Christy Madden. Christy Madden comes out around his marker. Crosses the halfway line. Plays it to Declan McCabe. Declan McCabe loses it momentarily. Gets it to Dermot. Dermot McCabe on the 45 metre line. Plays it to Christy Madden. He continued to run. He's on the 13 metre line. He kicks it right footed. He kicks it high. It goes out to the right and it goes wide. Oh, Eamon Brady to take the resulting kick out from the edge of the small parallelogram. His side trail by six points. Some pushing on Declan McCabe and it will be a free to the Gownerman. And I'm sure it's Declan McCabe himself who's going to take it. He kicks this one right footed, looking for Paddy Brady. Paddy Brady collects it in front of his marker on the 20 metre line, plays it to Dermot McCabe. Dermot McCabe turns, kicks it left footed. It's gone way out across the goal mat, out to the right and out wide. So Eamon Brady takes the kick out, crosses the 45 metre line, the ball breaks down. It's quite mighty Fagan in the centre of the park. Fagan is fouled and it's going to be a free to the Mullahorn man. Little altercation there off the ball. The referee allowed plays continue. Gerard Brady has taken the free. Broken down. Goes to Danny Brady. Danny Brady kicks it left footed. And it goes out off Danny Brady's boot. Out to the left and out wide. Or oh, Declan O'Reilly to take the kick out from the edge of the small parallelogram. Seven minutes of the second half have an elapsed here in New O'Reilly Memorial Park Cotill in the Cavan Senior Football Championship final between Ghana and Mullahorn. Ghana the lead one goal and ten to Mullahorn's one four. And Declan O'Reilly's kick out goes out through the middle, broken down, goes to Kieran Riley. Kieran Riley for Mullahorn fist pass it as far as Ger Christy Shields, Christy Shields kicks it right footed, Christy Shields kicks it high, he kicks it over the bar. That's Mullahorn's first score of the second half. And that reduces the deficit to just five points. So oh, Declan O'Reilly to take the kick out. Mullahorn playing with the breeze now in the second half. O'Reilly's kick out into the breeze. Very, very good. The ball breaks down. Kieran Brady collects it. Tays it back to Kieran Riley. Kieran Riley hops the ball. Comes out around his marker, kicks a right footed out this side of the field, looking for David Fagan. David Fagan, the corner forward, gets it in front of his marker. Still Fagan going towards goal on the 45 metre line. Kicks it right footed. It's got to drop a little bit short, held by Declan O'Reilly on the line. Controls the small parallelogram very well. Gets it out to the number 17 for Ghana. That's Damien Dignan. He's played to Bernard Morris. Bernard Morris with the ball, goes soloing forward, plays it back to Damien Dignan. Dignan with the ball. Solos and kicks right footed over the far side of the field. Backs ball all the way. Jared Brady collects it in front of his marker. Kicks it right footed long and high. Very, very high. Seamus Gannon and Joe Brady underneath it. The ball breaks down to Danny. Danny with the ball. Goes around his marker. Still Danny Brady. He's pushed out over the end line. And the referee awards a 13 metre free to the Mullahorn man for a push on Danny Brady. Oh, Danny Brady to take the result in 13 metre free. Out on the stand side of the field. Danny places the ball on the ground. So two sets of 
rival supporters behind the goals, chanting for the favourite teams. As Danny Brady prepares to take the kick, he kicks it left-footed, he kicks it high, and he has reduced the deficit still further. So just four points between the sides. Mullerhorn reduces the deficit. Another substitute on the Mullerhorn team. It looks like Dermot Gannon. Yes, indeed, it is Dermot Gannon, number 17, who has entered into the fray. And Michael Fitzsimons is the man making way. Declan O'Reilly's kick out way out high to the centre of the park. The ball broken down. Kieran Brady collects it at the centre half back position. Plays it out the side of the field. Goes to a Mullerhorn man. That's Michael Fitzsimons. His jersey is tugged and it's going to be a free to the Mullerhorn man gets it as far as Dermot Cannon. Dermot Cannon with the ball, plays it back to Kieran Riley. Kieran Riley going out around his marker, hops the ball. Still Kieran Riley. He's pulled down. And it's going to be a free to the Mullerhorn man, about 35 metres from there. Gown a goal. <laughs> so Michael Fagan placing the ball. Slightly out to the left, will suit the right foot kicker playing with the breeze in the second half. Michael Fagan, the Mullerhorn midfielder, wearing number nine, the man to strike the free. He kicks it right footed, kicks it high, it's gone out to the left and it's gone wide, and that's a bad miss for the Mullerhorn men. They needed that one to keep them in contention. Their side, the trail by four points as Declan O'Reilly places the ball just outside the small parallelogram to take the kick out. Gary Dunner, who comes this side, looking for a quick one. Tick tied to the centre of the park, breaks down. Bernard Morris is there on hand to collect it. He collects it in front of Kieran Brady. Still Bernard Morris with the ball, comes out around his marker, kicks it right-footed high down into the open corner in the space. Paul Lynch is there. Lynch collects the ball in front of everybody, kicks it right-footed across to Dermot Cannon. Dermot Cannon solos, fist passes out as far as Mark O'Reilly. Kieran O'Reilly hops the ball. Turns, comes back this side, being shadowed by Dermot McCabe, hops it again. The referee allows play to go on. It's kicked up as far as Shawnee Brady. Shawnee Brady collects it, goes around Gary Donahue. Stays Shawnee Brady with the ball, kicks it right footed, looking for Seamus Cannon. The ball breaks away from Seamus Cannon. Joe Brady collects it. No, in fact, he lets it drift away from him. Danny goes after it. Danny gets it up into his hands. Still Danny Brady with the ball, comes around Joe. St Danny Brady from Mullerhorn, coming in along the end line. Still Danny Brady, he's taken down, and it's going to be a line or free kick to the Mullerhorn men on the 13 metre line. And players shaping up to one another. Referee Martin Brady makes his way in there to settle things down. That he's done. His control of the game so far has been absolutely excellent. There's a 13 metre free to the Mullerhorn men. I'm sure it's Danny Brady who's going to take it. He's strolling back in to collect the ball, which is lying in there at the bottom of the wall. This to reduce the deficit to just three points. A more acute angle this time. Danny scorer of Mullerhorn's last point. That one was a little bit closer to goal. Danny Brady replaces the ball. Danny Brady coming up to the ball, strikes it left footed, strikes it high, strikes it over the bar and there's just three points between the sides. Mullerhorn, one goal and seven, and out of that, five of those are from freeze. Gowna, one goal and ten, all of those scores coming from play. Down to introducing a substitute, that's Sean Pearson wearing number 16. He's entered into the fray. He's going to corner forward position, I'm quite sure. We'll catch up with the switch around later on. Ronald Simpson is the man who makes way. It looks like Dermot McCabe is coming out of wing half forward with Paddy Brady going to full forward to kick out. It's broken down the centre of the park, so I'm holding on Lawrence Brady. And it's going to be a free... Fergal Harton trying to take it quickly. 
He's been sent back to the proper position and Harton kicks it now right footed high in the direction of goal. Paddy Brady underneath it, the ball breaking down. It breaks to Declan McCabe, his pass goes straight to a Mullahorn man, that's Porrick Brady. He plays it out as far as uh, Paul Lynch. Paul Lynch with the ball in his hands, plays it out to Christy Shields. Christy Shields' his pass intercepted by Dermot McCabe, he's on the 13 metre line, plays it across goal, the pass was a little bit too long. Declan McCabe collects it. Visit pass to Paddy Brady and Paddy Brady turns and kicks it right, left footed high and over the bar. Uh, should have been a goal, Dermot McCabe's pass went a little bit long for Declan McCabe. He had to chase after it and the chance had then gone away from Ghana. But Paddy Brady getting the point and Ghana would be quite happy with that to go back into a four point lead. One goal and 11 for Ghana, 1-7 for Mullahorn as Eamon Brady prepares to take the kick out from the 20 metre line, right footed, way out the far side of the field. And the man to collect it over there is uh, the number 11, Sean Brady. He was fouled and it's going to be a free to the Mullahorn men. Sean Brady still down on the ground. Referee holding up play till he gets some attention. So about 17 minutes having elapsed here in Hugh O'Reilly Memorial Park. In the second half, Ghana the lead by one goal and 11 to Mullahorn's 1-7, a four point lead for the men from Ghana. It will be free to the Mullahorn men, which Michael Fagan will take. Fagan kicks it right footed. It's broken down the centre in front of the Ghana goal. Ghana man coming out with it. That was Joe Brady. He was fouled and it's going to be a free to the Ghana fullback. Oh, the Ghana captain Joe Brady to take the resultant free. Gains another three metres, kicks it up this side of the field, finds Dermot McCabe unmarked on the for on the halfway line, he kicks it left footed into the open space, chasing after or going up for his Paddy Brady. The ball breaks down to Declan McCabe. Declan McCabe gets the ball in his hands. Still Declan McCabe going through. Carries it back to Kevin Madden. Kevin Madden with the ball in front of goal. Kevin Madden plays the ball back out to Paddy Brady. He plays it to Shawnee Pearson. Pearson finds Dermot McCabe, and Dermot McCabe kicks it left footed, goes away out to the left, and it's gone wide. Eamon Brady to take the kick out from the edge of the small parallelogram. Kicked high to the centre of the park. The ball breaks down to Mullahorn, and that's Jared Brady, the captain at the side. He gets it to Dermot Gannon. Dermot Gannon heading towards goal. He's 45 metres out. Still Dermot Gannon being shadowed all the way by Bernard Morris. Gannon kicks it right footed. He kicks it high, held on the line there by Declan, Declan O'Reilly. O'Reilly clears it out this side of the field. Dermot McCabe underneath it along with Damien. Damien breaks it down. It's going in the direction of David Fagan. He fails to get the ball up. The ball breaks and bobbing around there. Underneath is Kieran Brady. Kieran Brady is foul. No, the referee is collecting the ball. He's going to throw it up. So the player down injured is Kieran Brady. Kieran Brady has the ball in his hands. Referee calling playback. I think he was going to hop the ball originally. Mm. Well, in fact, he is awarding a free to the Ghanaman, and that will be taken by Christy Madden. He leads it instead to Damien Dignan. Damien Dignan plays it short to Fergal Harton. And Fergal Harton kicks a right foot long down the field. Underneath it is Kieran Brady. Kieran Brady was. So there was some holding on Declan McCabe behind, and it's going to be a free to the Ghana man, which will be taken by Dermot McCabe. Dermot McCabe to take this one, a left foot up from the hand to put Ghana five points ahead. It's quite a long way out. 
head short to Declan McCabe on the 20 metre line in space. Declan McCabe kicks a right footer, kicks it high, kicks it over the bar, and that is very slack marking by the Mullerhorn defence. So 21 minutes of the second half of an elapsed here in O'Reilly Park Hotel. Gauna the lead by five points. One goal and 12 for Gauna. One goal and seven for Mullerhorn as Eamon Brady takes the kick out. It's right footed, high to the centre of the park. Michael Fagan fields. He's played well fielding in the centre of the park for Mullerhorn today. He kicks right footed, finds Damien on this wing. Damien Riley hops the ball, still going solo in forward. Damien Riley gets it to. Um, in the direction of a player who was pulled down and Kevin Madden brings it away only to pass it straight to Kieran O'Reilly. Kieran O'Reilly plays it up along the wing where it's with uh, Shawnee Brady. Shawnee Brady playing it looking for Jerry Sheridan. The ball has gone out over the sideline will be a line ball to the Ghana men. Line ball to be taken over there by Gary Donoghue. Gary Dunne, who plays it to Declan McCabe. Declan McCabe comes out around his marker. Still Declan McCabe with the ball, kicks a right foot. It looks for Paddy Brady at full forward. The ball hops off Paddy Brady out over the sideline. Will be a line ball to the Mullerhorn men, which I'm sure will be taken by Parik Brady. No, in fact, he's leaving it instead to Kieran Brady, or Jared Brady, rather as Ghana warm up another substitute on the far side of the field the long drive up along the line has gone out over the sideline will be a line ball to Ghana just down in front of the Mullerhorn dugout Gavin Harton kicks it right footed it's high down the field Kieran Brady underneath it fields it and kicks it right footed back up into the Space broken down by Kieran Brady as far as Lawrence. Lawrence with the ball turns, kicks it right footed into the open space underneath to his park. Brady and Paddy Brady. Parry, Paddy Brady collects it for the Ghana man. Solos loses control of it. And Park Brady brings it away now for the Mullerhorn man. Comes out this side of the field. Hops the ball, kicks it right footed up along the wing. Goes to Jerry Sheridan. He loses it. Goes to Kieran Brady. Kieran Brady to Sean Pearson. Pearson kicks it to. Declan McCabe and Declan McCabe kicks it out to the left and out wide. <laughs> Eamon Brady to take the kick out from the edge of the small parallelogram. His side the trail by five points, one goal and 12 for Ghana, one goal and seven for Mullerhorn. Gauna have introduced the sub. We'll catch up with that in a moment. The ball breaks down. It's with Fergal Harton on the 45 metre line. Harton going towards goal in space. Kicks it right footed. Kicks it high. The ball hops and goes out to the right and goes wide. Gauna substitute was number 18, Terry Harton. And he has replaced Kevin Madden. Oh, Terry Harton enters the fray for the Gauna men. He's playing at wing half forward as Eamon Brady takes the kick out high towards the centre of the park. Bernard Morris goes up, the ball breaks down, it's with uh, Dermot McCabe, he gets it to Lawrence Brady. Lawrence Brady plays it out into the corner where Paddy Brady waits. Paddy collects it on the 13 metre line, turns onto the left boot, it's left footed from him. It's broken right across goal by Sean Pearson, it goes out to the left and out wide. Six minutes of normal time remaining here in the Cavan Senior Football Championship final as Eamon Brady prepares to take the kick out. Right footed, way out the far side of the field. The ball breaks down, it's with Seamus Gannon. He's fouled, it's a free, taken quickly up the field, looking for De Pad Danny Brady. The ball breaks in behind, it's with uh, Gary Donoghue for Ghana. Gary Donoghue plays it out to Gavin Harton. Harton, the bearded Harton, his kick is blocked down by Dermot Gannon. Out over the sideline will be a line ball to the Gaunaman and I'm sure it will be Gary Donoghue to take. Gary Donoghue kicks it high up in the air. It's cut out by Damien Riley. Damien Riley out in front of his marker. It's out around Der Bernard Morris. Damien Riley going in and burst up the field. Plays it to Dermot Gannon. Dermot Gannon sides foots his marker. He plays it in into the corner. It's now Dermot Gannon has it. He kicks a right footer from Dermot Gannon. It's gone high from Gannon and over the bar. The pass given to him was from Danny Brady.
One goal in eight for Mullerhorn, one goal in 12 for Gauna. Just four points between the sides as Gauna bring the ball away. It's with Gavin Harton. Gavin Harton, referee. Uh, uh, referee has awarded a free against Gavin Harton. He's making his way over there for throwing up the heels. Gavin Harton now being called up by Martin Brady. So the referee is still speaking to Gavin Harton over there on the far side of the field. So Michael Fagan being asked to take the ball back slightly out behind the 45 meter line. He will take the free, hopefully he will be hoping to float it in towards goal. See Christy Shields in there around the edge of the small parallelogram along with Bernard Morris. The kick from Fagan is floating in towards goal. Lawrence Brady goes up. That's magnificent fielding by the midfielder for Gauna. Has the ball, turns, kicks it right footed down this side of the field into the open space. Declan McCabe is underneath it. Declan McCabe wins it in front of his marker. That's Kieran O'Reilly. McCabe holds up play, finds Bernard Morris. Bernard Morris goes out around the tackle of Kieran Brady and finds Christy Madden. Christy Madden going soloing forward. The speedy wing halfback crosses the 45 metre line. Still Christy Madden with the ball. He's heading towards the 20 metre line. He's on the 13. He shoots right footed. It's high. It's gone over the bar. A great score by Christy Madden and Gauna. One goal and 13 for Ghana to Mullerhorn's one goal and eight as Christy Madden makes his way back down across the halfway line to his wing half back position. Eamon Brady to take the kick out from the 20 metre line. His side, the trail by five points. The crowd starting to drift towards the exit here in Hugh O'Reilly Memorial Park. Lawrence Brady goes up, takes it down one handed, gets it to Kieran Brady. It's back out now with Bernard Morris. Bernard Morris plays it out this side of the field to Paddy Brady. Paddy Brady going for it, the ball close to the sideline. It's an out over the sideline and will be a line ball to the Ghana men. The man to take the line ball will indeed be Dermot McCabe. He's drifted out now to a wing half forward position. He will kick this one left footed, floating it in towards goal. He'll be hoping that the wind will carry it all the way over the bar. Dermot McCabe looks towards goal, kicks it left footed. This one going right across. It's going to land between the 13 and 20 meter line. The man with it there is Sean Pearson. He's kicked it high. He kicked it over the bar. Or in fact, it was Terry Harton who kicked it over the bar. His first score of the match. Terry Harton, the man who won the man match award when Gauna first won the title back in 1988. Gauna, one goal and 14. Mullerhorn, one goal and eight. Six points between the sides. The kick out, way down the side of the field. Breaks to Dermot McCabe. Dermot McCabe kicks it left footed in the direction of goal, in the open space. That ball is going to hop and hop out, hop out to the left and hop wide. The crowd moving off now, does rows towards the exits. As Gauna, the lead by six points. Gauna, one goal and 14. Mullerhorn, one goal and eight. As Eamon Brady prepares to take the kick out from the edge of the small parallelogram. The kick out breaks in the centre of the pitch. It's fired out this side of the field to Christy Madden. Christy Madden on the 45 metre line. High tackle on Christy Madden by Kieran Brady. And it's going to be a free to the Gauna man. Players coming in from all angles now. So players from all. Mentors from both sides out trying to settle their forces down. Oh, Christy Madden is still down, receiving attention down here on the right hand side. He's back up on his feet, Martin Brady, st still to take some action. Come on, Christy. Christy Madden back up on his feet, seems to be okay, gets a drink out of the bottle. 
just minutes of the match remaining. As Dermot McCabe remain, preparing to take the free. About 45 metres from goal. Dermot McCabe kicks it left footed. It goes out to the left and out wide. Referee Martin Brady blows the full-time whistle. Ghana are champions for 1996 on a scoreline of Ghana, one goal and 14. Bullahorn, one goal and eight. Six-point win for the men from Ghana. Excellent display from the Ghana man. Able to win possession, hold on to it, and construct the scores. A scoreline of one goal and 14, and all those scores coming from play. Mullahorn, they fought gallantly, they trailed by two points at half time, but immediately after it uh, restarted the second half, Ghana went back into a six point lead with early points from Paddy Brady, two from Dermot McCabe, and another from Declan O'Reilly. Ghana fully deserving that victory on a scoreline of Ghana, one goal and 14. Mullahorn, one goal and eight. From commentator Donald O'Reilly and cameraman Tommy Riley. We bid you farewell from O'Reilly Park Cotill.
greatest fighter and ever, and lucky enough to turn out good enough for us. I met a note of a few people that I'd like to thank. First of all, before I forget about it, it ain't over yet, boys. We'll be back, I promise the county, and everybody in this county, that we are going to start training next Wednesday night. And we will not stop until we even know the time to get back to this party.
Praise the Lord that uh, we just can't get over here. And I hope you do it myself. Because next year we want to take that one as well. I want to thank all the players for the horse. We've been a long time over the last couple of years. And we keep coming back. And I can tell you here now we'll be back again. To the players we love them. Who have traveled up and down for the last three or four months. I said thanks. Our day will come. When? I don't know, but it will come. I want to thank the master, Jerry's master, Jerry Short, for the hard work they've been doing for us. And our team manager, Tim Riley. He's a bit of a dog for the hard work, guys. I'm sorry we didn't get down in any game today. There's a problem, I say, starting again. We will be trying. And I tell you now, Mother Horn's day is coming. I'm going to do it. Watch it. Thank you. Joining us now is the chairman of the victorious Ghana team and uh, full forward from the Ghana team, Dermot McCabe. Dermot, this has been a very memorable week for you. Uh, yeah, I can't complain now. It's been very good. Uh, towards it was a great surprise for me to receive that, but I always said Sunday today on the back of my mind. It was always, it was nice to get that, but this is important. I wanted a championship after losing last year, and it was great. And it was a great team performance. And I got man of the match there, but I think there was a lot of more men that deserved it to meet than me. And it was great, great to win. Yes, indeed. Ghana seemed to be very organised. Our support play was uh, very evident from the early stages of the first half. Well, we knew what we had to do when we were going out in the field, and we had it all worked in every area covered. And it was just a matter of sort of performing and carrying out this, sort of on this stage. And this is what we wanted to do. Yes, Ghana, uh, Mullahorn came back at you late in the, second, in the first half, but uh, immediately after half time, you tacked on three points to give yourselves a cushion again. Yeah, we knew, uh, Eamon said it at half-time, if they got to a draw or level scores, we'd be in bother. So we needed a big start, and we got a big start, luckily enough, at both halves. And it kept us, kept us a few scores ahead, which always left them in bother. And they came back well, now at the end of the first half, they got a goal, and got in well, and left us in bother. And we're, we were coasting it, we were coasting it nearly, in the end of the first half, until that. Yes, indeed, you mentioned Eamon Coleman. Club chairman is always the man with the responsibility for seeking out and finding a manager. Eamon Coleman was ideal. Eamon Coleman was the man. He made the whole difference this year. Uh, and he, his, his uh, performance on the day is fantastic. I mean, he puts in as much on the day as the players do. The effort he puts in before you go out on the field, and if you're in at half-time, you'll realise what he earns his money because uh, you could see it at half-time when them boys come out in the field. There was three or four points that went straight ahead because I mean, he, he lifts them. And uh, his performance at training as well, he... he uh, he has a, 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 a sort of a, a, a way with everybody that uh, he, can, he can give out to you, but at the same time you can accept it. And uh, I think he was fantastic this year, and I'm delighted. I'm delighted for the players, I'm delighted for him. Yes, indeed. I was sitting over there on the far side of the field, and I could still hear Eamon ringing out instructions with five minutes to go. Looking forward to the Ulster Club Championship. I believe you have drawn Bourne a nice match in, for your first one. Doesn't look like it's going to be too handy. Uh, Bourne is a good team. Uh, there have been great Bourne teams. I suppose that this is the second batch of fellas coming through. They're a bit young, but uh, we're just going to take this day as it comes and come back Wednesday night. We'll, we'll concentrate on Bourne then. But we intend to give the Ulster a wrap if we can at all and hopefully do something. <laughs> yes, indeed. The last time that Ghana were in the Ulster Club Championship, you had quite a good run. We were unlucky enough against uh, Balahi uh, in the latter stages of the competition. Yeah, we were very unlucky. I think we were ahead when time was up and, and Desi got Desi broke his leg and it was very unfortunate. It hasn't played since and 
and they actually, I think they scored the equaliser in about the 34th or 5th minute and the winner nearly in the 37th, so it was very unfortunate for us. And that, te that team went on to lose the All Ireland final and could have won. I think they actually missed a penalty in the All Ireland final that day, and that could have been us, but it wasn't. Yes, indeed. You've drawn Bourne. Do you know much about the Bourne side, this new Bourne team? Uh, I don't know much. I read a bit about them. Uh, I think it was actually in our own paper there, and it was about John Shorty Trainer. I think it's John, and the star man he was, and they have Gary Walsh as well. I believe there are a lot of young men. Uh, when Down won a minor all Ireland, I think there's a lot of them players still there playing with Bourne. So they're still they're very young and very fit, so it should be a very tough game. Gentlemen, both, thank you very much for coming over to us. I'm sure the celebrations will go on long into the night down around Ghana. Cheers. Thank you. Joining us now is Eamon Coleman, the successful manager of the Ghana team. Eamon, many congratulations. And going, looking into today's match, how did you feel? I thought it was a very good game of football for a county final, particularly with two neighbouring teams. And uh, I thought that Ghana proved on the day that they're a very good football team. Yes, indeed. It was evident from early on your support play for one another was, uh, was marvellous to watch. Yeah, and the support play was very good and we've done a lot of hard work since February and uh, I think that uh, they played to their strength today, they used the ball well, they played the ball and when you're playing Gaelic football it's a ball you play with, nothing else matters, you've got to concentrate on the ball. Yes indeed, your star performer up front Dermot McCabe, he was the target man at all times himself and Paddy Brady. Yeah, both men. Paddy Brady played very well up front today. And uh, the whole team played well. I thought Christy Madden at right half-back was outstanding. I thought he was outstanding today. But the whole team played well. And uh, we scored 114. And any team that scores 114 should win. Yes, indeed. And 114. And I was just looking down through the statistics. All from play. Oh, well, I didn't know that. But that, that's even better. To score 114 from play in a county final, that's something super. Yes, indeed. The goal just uh, early in the first half, your memories of that one from Paddy Brady? I, well, I know that it was played up the left wing and there was one two played with Paddy and he just turned and hammered it. And he's a, Paddy is a very underrated player and he's a great shot. And I think uh, Mullerhorn underrated Paddy today. Yes, indeed. A marvellous fielder of the ball as well. We've seen him operate around the middle of the field this season for Ghana. Yeah, we played him at corner for today because we thought maybe he lacked a bit of pace for the middle of the field. The, the, the Mullerhorn midfield is quite pacey, so we decided to play Kevin Madden in the middle of the field because he's, he's quite quick. And I think that uh, that sort of worked for a long time today, that we had great support play coming from Kevin Madden and Fergal, Fergal Harden. And I think all the players was outstanding today. We trained for this, and there's no good training for it. You don't perform, and today, going to perform to their best. Yes, indeed. Looking forward now to the Ulster Club Championship, I believe you have Bourne in the first round. That will be a difficult task. Yeah, Bourne, <laughs> the addition's there. Bourne has been top team and down for a few years. They've gone out of the limelight. Down Patrick was there and now Bourne's back. But this day fortnight we go north. And uh, I look forward to playing against Bourne. I always like playing down, so I look forward to playing Bourne. Yes, indeed. I think Paddy O'Rourke is their team manager this year. That's a right. man you've had battles with in the past. Yeah, well, I spoke to Paddy before the semi-final. We'd be good friends and we have had battles on and off the pitch. But it'll be a good game, I would say, against Bourne next two weeks' time. Eamon Coleman, thank you very much for you. talking to us. Joining us now is the victorious captain, Joe Brady. Joe, many congratulations. A, a day you've been waiting for for three years now, I think. Yeah, yeah. well, 94 was the last time we won it against Mullahorn. Uh, we're very hungry for it today. Uh, Going to work very hard all year. The amount of trend to put in since Eamon Coleman come is unbelievable. Uh, the amount of trend that we've done, we could win five finals with the amount of training we've done and hopefully it'll stand us in good stead for us. Yes indeed, your work rate was uh, very evident from an early early par part of the match, you were working hard supporting one another all the way. Yeah, yeah. well that's the game plan, Eamon, uh, well that's the uh, game Eamon Coleman brought in it, was, it wasn't really a foreign game to us because we played, it was just a, to brush up on the skills of the game and the hand passing and stuff like that, it worked very well and it's a game that Gauna will hopefully polish up a bit more and we'll need to if we're going to go push Ulster very hard. Yes, your half-back line come up the field all the time. Christy Madden especially, he went on some great runs up the field today. Mm. Christy Madden probably was in the runner for man of the match too. He's a very, very good footballer. When he's in control, I think he scored a point. Or was it was a two points. He played played very, very well. And that's kind of, uh, I suppose, a Derry style of play too. They're attacking half-back line. A lot of teams, in years... 
every other year when we were playing teams and was being beaten, we were saying, God, they came at us, they came at us, they came at us, the half back line. This year we were doing that to other teams, and that's probably why we won the senior championship today. Yes, a scoreline of 114, as Eamon Coleman said, always good enough to win a county final. And 114, all from play. Yeah, that is very, very, that's very, very good. Um, probably we, we, we should have scored more from freeze. We missed, uh, we missed a few from freeze. But when you get the chances, you have to take them. And we took the goal very well. Paddy Brady took the goal very well, and so credit to him. Yes, indeed. You're a, quite a big, strong, physical team. Should suit you going into the Ulster Club Championship? Well, yeah, we were in it. We were very, very disappointed two years ago when we were beaten by Belahi. Desi broke his leg that day, and and uh, we were ahead at that time. We were after weathering the storm twice. Belahi came at us very hard, very hard twice. We weathered the storm, came along, we were on top, and the next thing, Desi broke his leg, and was sent off in the same incident by the referee that was refing last last Sunday in the Ireland final, Pat McEnany. We were very, very disappointed because of that. Um, the team really fell apart after that. They went ahead. He played seven to ten minutes extra time as well, and uh, there won't be a point. Which and we really, really is looking to get back into Ulster to show how good we are. Yes, indeed, Joe. Um, <laughs> yes, indeed, Joe. Joe says he's anxious to get to a shower. We let him go, and. The celebrations, I'm sure, will go on t yeah, tonight, I was tomorrow. To, <laughs> I, was to, I was to declare tomorrow a bank holiday in Gowna, but I think they know it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yes, I think that would be taken for granted. Joe, many congratulations. Thanks very much. And we might Thank see you later down there around Gowna. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Lawrence, where's Billy? Where's Billy? Where's Billy Simpson? Billy Simpson, wherever you are. Sean Pearson. wherever you are. Anybody else? 
is that the last? Damien Dayton is here. Damien Dayton, Rolia. Right. Can you, can you hold it for a minute now? Shh. This is a great win for going to football, so I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm going to hand you over now to Sean McGowan, the chairman, to address you, and then we'll follow by the rest of the team. Year we come back here, there was every bit as big a crowd to welcome us back even though we lost and we're delighted to be back here with the Cup because the people are going to deserve every bit as much as these men here. <laughs> the, this has been an exceptionally long year and there's a, an awful lot of people I want to thank. I know you probably are fed up listening to people to be thanked but I think they should be thanked. And we'll start off with uh, a man that done a, a great job for us yesterday. There was an incident happened a couple of years ago when a helicopter flew into Mount Joy and whipped two men out of it before I even knew what happened. But we had our man in uh, England yesterday and he got our two rebels back in time and I'd like to thank George Kern. <laughs> Going off. I thought some of Coleman's mates were here tonight. I'd also like to thank, I suppose the main men to be thanked tonight is the selectors and, and Eamon Coleman for the work they've done since last February. clubs has proven this, if you don't have the team on the day, no matter how good your manager is, it's no good. And we had 25 or 30 fellas that give 100% every night for the last 6 or 8 months and it's paid off tonight and I'm delighted for them. I'd like to thank the members, all the members of uh, our committee, from Billy, Brendan, Aileen, there's so many of them, I, don't, I can't mention all the names. Oh yeah, where is Aileen? I can hear. I can hear a squealing somewhere. Hey, Ellie. Come on, Ellie. We lift you up, Ellie. But uh, all the members, all the club members, uh, all the club members all year who give a lot of work and doesn't be seen. supporters for the last four years when you get to a county final it costs an awful lot of money and we've gone to the same people year in year out and I want to thank those people now I want to thank Pat for the, as the main sponsor I want to thank all the associated sponsors uh, no matter it doesn't matter if you give a hundred pound a thousand pound or you buy a lot of every week every penny counts and we needed it and we're glad for it I want it. <laughs> Only for Brendan Finley, I wouldn't think of anyone. Uh, Seamus Shields, he wants me to thank Seamus Shields as well as a club member. Uh, I want to thank uh, Noel Ellis for his bananas. Who says bananas isn't good for you? You, you remember this outfit. You should be up here. Where are you? Watch, Shemus. The celebration will start off tomorrow. I tell all the kids, go to school tomorrow because we'll be up to see us. I, 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 I want to hand this over 
it out to the captain of the county champions for 1996, Joe Brady. I'm not going to say too much because I got enough abuse for saying too much today. I'd like to thank every, every one of our supporters for the amount of help they gave us all year. Everybody that turns out as a match, at a match is, is vastly appreciated by every one of the players. The amount of work these players put in three nights, two nights a week since last February, even January. Some of them even had to come out and do an extra night. Anybody was over, overweight. It wasn't me. It was like Degna and the rest of them. But them boys deserve an extra little bit of credit. Everybody put in a fierce effort, and this is what it's all for. And hopefully, we'll be here. <laughs> hopefully, we'll be here next November with an Ulster Championship Cup. I honestly believe. I honestly believe. The team honestly believes, and Eamon Coleman honestly believes that there is an Ulster Championship in this team. And if everybody gets behind the wheel, we will definitely win an Ulster Championship. We'll be out there in the next Weddings or Tours tonight, and that shows... And that'll show, that'll show that we are really interested in winning Ulster. The last thing I'm going to say is, I declare tomorrow a bank holiday in Ghana. I call... I now call... I now call on the smallest man with the biggest pair of lungs in Ghana, Eamon Coleman. Sean McGahan approached me last year and uh, up in Edgerstown, I had no intention of coming to Ghana. It was a far to think from my mind. And when he brought along the heavy brigade of Bernard Morrison and a few Joe Brady, I was I think they persuaded me to think about it anyway. And uh, Finally, we got, di got, got me. I decided that we'd come to Ghana and give it a shot anyway. I'd already sent Mullahorn, I wasn't interested, so I backed him. <laughs> I backtracked and, and I said I would come to Ghana. And last February, we met in the hotel in Ghana and we gave a commitment that we would go all out to win the championship. We'd forget about the league. We said that was a Mickey Mouse competition, anybody can win that. We'll go all the way for the championship. Now we have got the championship. That is only part of what we're after. Our next step is in two weeks' time when we go north to the county down and to the beloved six counties to play a board. <laughs> they, I was asked today day when I was interviewed by Jerome Quinn on Ulster Television how much it meant to me to win this championship. And uh, I said... It meant, the only thing it meant more was one in the Sam Maguire in 93. One in the championship for Ghana was came second, and that was very, very high up the list. <laughs> the, the Ghana players and the selectors and the officials, they're a fine bunch of men, and they've, they've done a fine job. And... I would like to thank the players because some of these players, I'm surprised they're still speaking to me the things I have said to them. <laughs> but they listened and we learned and 
Even Lawrence Brady, I've got him on my side at last. <laughs> I, I think today in the second half, Lawrence proved once again that he must be one of the best players in Cavan not to be wearing the county jersey. <laughs> And I think that Martin McHugh would have been better off today if he had been in, in um, Coot Hill than playing in the championship semi-final back in Donegal. Now, I would like to thank Sean and Una for the hospitality they've given me and a lot of other things too, a lot of cheek to go with it. <laughs> so we hope to see us here and behind us when we go north in two weeks' time. Thank you very much. Anybody else wants a few few words? No? They're all itching to get away for the beer. The party starts now. The party starts, so everybody drink lots of beer, drink as much as you want to.